Hello, everyone. My name is Chen Hao Tan. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Chicago, where I directed the Human Class AI Lab. First, I really want to thank the organizers of the AI and HCL workshop at ICML for inviting me for giving a talk to give a talk and organizing the great workshop. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot go there in person, so I'm going to record this short talk to give share some of our recent work and uh, organize us three lessons towards human centered explanations. So all of us are very excited about the potential of AI. AI can potentially improve human decision making in a wide range of uh, critical settings such as medicine, education, criminal justice, and information con consumption. However, uh, there are also growing concerns if we simply view it as a black box. It has a lot of issues such as accountability, bias, and more recently, I guess the notion of value alignment is also very important. And explanations are hypothesized to improve human interaction. It can serve as a way to um, help human, to bridge human AI. And indeed, the role of explanations is well recognized in a lot of current thinking around the regulation of AI. Uh, a recent uh, in the US, a recent AI Bill of Rights kind of has an important component called notice and explanations. And this kind of requires us to look at what explanations actually look like. So if we are the kind of work on explaining AI models, then it's actually kind of interesting that it's quite different from what is required for these policies or AI explanations to effectively bridge human AI. In this, typically when we design that algorithm of AI uh, explanations, we mostly look at the AI models and we just try to open the black box as hard as we can with no explicit human architecture. And that is where I think the problem lies in. And um, we need to think of explanations as a communication process where we look at carefully at this next step where our explanations are generated, looking at how humans would interpret such explanation, generated explanations and whether these explanations can serve uh, the goals that a human wants to do with AI. And with our work on this interpretation step, we uh, I summarized them into three lessons. The first one is human intuitions are necessary for effective AI explanations. Second, I'll build on the first lesson one and try to provide a recipe for generating human standard explanations. First, we need to articulate the interaction between explanations and the human intuitions. And then we collect data to model. And then finally, uh, is a corollary of the first two and a commentary of some existing thinking on explanations. I kind of wanted to emphasize the point that one size doesn't fit all. So let's start with lesson one, human intuitions are necessary for AI explanations. So there has been, with this algorithm, with many algorithms on generating explanations, we have started to do some work where we look at whether explanations are able to help humans achieve their goals. And we found mixed and even conflicting results. For instance, in the very early work, uh, such as Lime, it shows that feature importance can improve model debugging. And in our own work and many other people, so in contrast, we show that when we include feature importance in human, in AI decision making, human plus AI does not outperform AI alone. So how can we make sense of these results? And I argue that there are kind of two key questions. One is the definition of human understanding remains unclear. Maybe what we mean by human understanding is different in different scenarios. And secondly, we don't have a rigorous way to think about and what conditions, explanations can improve human understanding and why. So let's start with the first uh, part, human, what makes sense, making sense of human understanding in the context of AI explanations. So we conducted a literature survey to look at a variety of existing work. Uh, if you're interested in the details of the uh, survey, feel, uh, feel free to go to this GitHub link. Uh, you can also scan the QR code for that. And we summarize, we identified three core concepts of human understanding. Um, first, like using this toy version of the problem, and each uh, plus and minus sign represents a data point. And the three core concepts connect to uh, lines in this paper. So first, um, we have task decision boundary, which is the underlying task that we're interested in, for instance, medical diagnosis, who has actually has disease and who doesn't. 
And model decision boundary is the learned version of the task decision boundary. So model learned some decision boundary from the data. And in this case, it actually approximates F pretty well. And open cases, they are not exactly the same. So we have an important concept called model error, which is the region where the model differs from the uh, decision model differs from the task decision model. And the first key insight of this work is that existing quantitative measures of human understanding can all be mapped to one of these three concepts. And just as to kind of give you some more concrete example, for instance, maybe you have heard of human simulatability, essentially looking at whether humans are able to simulate the model predictions. And that is essentially measuring human understanding of the model decision boundary. And in the example that I mentioned before, uh, human AI plus AI performance, where we have AI helping people make decisions. And in that case, we're essentially measuring human understanding of the task decision boundary. And finally, the notion of trust is closely connected with model error. Um, and in all these cases, uh, we are looking at um, this one of th these three core concepts. And building on these three concepts, we can look at, a, we also build a full, full formal, full formal, formal framework to describe the interaction between AX nations and human understanding. So here is a simplified version of like our framework. So we are concerned with these three variables. Uh, head H refers to human understanding of model prediction for a particular instance. And capital YH refers to human understanding of the actual label and ZH re represents human understanding of uh, model error. And our framework kind of about is about like by default, we don't really know how these three things relate to each other. And our framework kind of describes how the relation can change under different conditions. And in particular, we kind of introduce this show, show of reader that we think is very important in this context in reasoning about human interaction. And the most important insight from this work is the less is that our lesson one. Human intuitions are necessary for effective uh, machine explanations. In fact, we prove that without assumptions about human intuitions, explanations can improve human understanding of model decision boundary, but they cannot improve uh, human understanding of the task decision boundary beyond model decision boundary or improve model error. You can check out the detailed proof in our paper. Uh, and here I'm going not going to go to the details, but instead I'm going to use a concrete example to show the uh, high-level intuitions. So think of the task pneumonia classification, which is very important and a common task that doctors can do. What if we give this task to an alien who doesn't have any intuition about this task? And this would be the case where we cannot assume any human intuitions. If we don't assume human intuitions, um, or like in this case, alien intuitions, then the alien really has no ground to do anything with explanations. The best thing that the alien can do is to follow the model decision, model predictions and the understanding of task decision boundary is bounded by model decision boundary if we show the model predictions. In comparison, what we often think about how humans may interact with this usually assume some human intuitions. And in this case, like very simple human intuitions can be the doctors know where the lungs are. And when showing this model, uh, explanation, the, the, the doctor can realize that it's not even looking at the lungs, maybe likely something is off with the model. And the human can thus verify whether the model can potentially be wrong and hopefully uh, reach a state where human plus AI outperforms AI alone. And note that in the, the example just now, I was kind of using, describing the mechanism that, of how your doctors may interact with uh, model explanations or machine explain, AI explanations. And that mechanism is probably oversimplistic to explain uh, the real human interaction in this with future importance. Okay, here are the main takeaways of this work. Uh, human intuitions are necessary for effective AI explanations, and we provide a formal framework for describing how AI explanations may improve human understanding. Check out our proof and more experiments in this work. Uh, that's down with my awesome PhD student, Cha Cha Chen, and postdoc Shippo, uh, Micro Emily Sharma, Microsoft Research. This was recently accepted at TMLR and also present their fact this year. So let's look at lesson two, which builds up uh, on, this, builds on the, the first lesson. So knowing that human intuition is important, I think a general recipe for uh, building 
human centered explanations is to articulate the interaction between explanations and human intuitions and the collect data model of them. Just to uh, review them in, uh, on, on this uh, with slightly different wording. So I think to build human centered explanations, the first step is to articulate how the mechanism of how humans may interact with explanations. What do you expect humans to do with the explanations you generate? What knowledge they need to bring in so that they can make sense of explanations, maybe to override the machine prediction or identify a bug or figuring out a step to uh, improve the model. And then we generate explanations that tailor to that mechanism. And this in, is in general very hard to do. And I think that's where all our future work uh, can happen. And here we start with a relatively simple example uh, to show how we uh, started this, this line of work. So going back to this pneumonia diagnosis task is entirely an image-based task, seeing this image, deciding whether this person has pneumonia or not. AI can potentially help by giving a prediction. So AI predicts pneumonia. And this is exactly the black, black box scenario, right? And if we only give the prediction, there's not much that a person can do. And they would wonder why AI makes the predictions and is like likely just well over reliance can happen that human may just follow the AI predictions. Now, AI can also give explanation in this case, also in the form of image. And this is commonly known as example-based explanation. So I give you this example based explanation and the human can literally uh, decide uh, based on this explanation. And how, right? I think this is where we come in and specify the mechanism. We use a very simple mechanism where we think similarity is the key. So given this example, we are going to, a person is going to examine whether this image, this candidate test image is similar to the justification. If they are similar, then they would choose to trust the AI prediction. If they are not similar, then uh, they would think the AI prediction is ungrounded and maybe try to cho choose uh, to go the other way. However, this similarity measure requires an important property of the explanation. It requires that when AI generates explanations, it can actually, it knows what human similarity measure looks like. And out of the box, AI explanations may not be able to achieve that. So for example, in this very well-learned classifier, you can see that each dot re refers to an image uh, in the task of math was a butterfly. And the, this is a very good classifier because these two classes are well separated. But if we look at a test image and we want to generate explanation and use the AI representations to find the nearest neighbor to the test image and which chooses the right bottom one. And we realize that this looks nothing like the test image. And if we ask, use human perception as the, uh, as the way to choose nearest neighbor, we'll choose this one, which looks much more similar to test image. So in other words, by default, this out of the box AI may not actually learn um, human similarity measure, although it can perform this task really well. So in explanations in this case are directly derived from AI representations. And the reason that the explanations are not human centered are, or not human, are not really aligned with, with human intuitions is because of misaligned AI representations. The AI systems uh, representations are not aligned with human, and as a result, they don't identify nearest neighbors similar to humans. And the solution that we propose is to learn human comparable representations. And the key inside is to incorporate a well established task. Uh, it's called trivial learning. So in this process, we collect many human privilege judgments. Given a candidate image, we show two reference images, reference A and the reference B. And we ask human which one looks more similar to the candidate image. And once we collect a lot of such trivial data, then they can be the basis for us to learn human similarity judgment. And we develop a multitask learning framework to combine typical supervised learning and trivial learning. And our loss function has two parts. First, we have a cross entropy loss, uh, what the bread and butter, the bread and butter for typical supervised learning, and uh, human judgment prediction, which has a triple in the margin loss. And by combining these two, we are able to we, we we believe that we are able to learn something called human compatible representations, and we are going to validate that through a decision making set. So we explored more di more different. Uh, ways of using example-based explanations in case-based decision support. And here we are only going to show a neutral decision support in the interest of time. So what, how it works is that given a candidate image, we are going to 
ask AI to find the nearest neighbor in either class. And the intuition is that we try to get AI to give the best evidence that it can come up with to support the prediction of pneumonia or, or not pneumonia. And then let a human judge using their own ability to judge similarity. And again, the highlight here is that we have a very clear mechanism of how the explanations will be used by human. And in order to evaluate whether explanations are, are effective, uh, we vary the underlying representation to generate the explanations. We start with a random explanation. Essentially, we choose a random image, image from each class. Then we use AI that's trained only with the cross entropy loss. And this is what typically would, people would have used once they build a model and they want to use example based explanations. And then we also use AI with human comparable representations in this work and use that to identify the nearest neighbor in each class. And we also worked with the butterfly versus mask task in the paper. Here we only show the results for pneumonia classification. And the y axis here is accuracy, and each of the bar represents one of these underlying representations to generate explanations. So random AI with the cross entropy loss only and the human comparable representations. And we can see that AI with the supervision loss only actually performs a little worse than random. Um, and that shows that AI on its own it really has no incentive to learn a similarity measure that's similar to human uh, similarity measure it just needs to perform the task. And it can do that pretty easily just by sidestepping human intuitions. And with human intuitions in this task, we can actually do pretty well in terms of classification automatically. And it also leads to much more effective explanations. In this case, we can actually enable lay people to achieve close to 80% accu accuracy in this pretty challenging task of pneumonia classification. And you can check out more results in this paper uh, down with uh, Han Liu, Yi Zhou Tian, Cha Cha Chen, Shi Feng, Yu Xin Chen, which was recently published at iClear this year. And the final lesson I would like to kind of highlight is one size doesn't fit all. This is kind of the me main message, a uh, key kind of cor uh, uh, natural corollary from the previous two lessons. So explanations are potentially useful for many things. And so far we have been focusing on the use case where we have decision maker and we are thinking about what's the best way to provide decision support to help decision makers achieve better accuracy. So decision makers can be a doctor in the context of medical diagnosis, can be a judge in criminal justice, it can be loan officer in the context of loan application. It can be a uh, hiring manager in the context of like um, job application. But they, it can also be used for many different other cases. For instance, decision subjects would be the flip side of the decision maker. Uh, in loan application, it would be the applicant. And if your loan application got rejected, it would be very useful for you to receive some explanations of why it was rejected. And it can also be useful for to help auditing and it can also help researchers to develop a better scientific understanding of the model and it can help model developers debug the model. And one kind of implicit thing I think many researchers have realized, but I think is not self-explanatory, is that a lot of the work that we see in machine learning conferences implicitly are actually on the final two goals. That kind of goes back to my earlier message. There is no explicit human in the picture. And then oftentimes machine researchers have this attitude where well, we are going to build one good explanation algorithm that's going to work for everything. Just one explanation rules all. But I think, the, unfortunately, that's often just really leads to the thinking, well, we are thinking of our implicit audience is a researcher or model developer. And as a result, these explanations may hardly generalize to other cases, such as when we want to use them to support decision making. To, to kind of make this message very clear, let's think of like extreme example. Um, this is a paper that I really like uh, is in the context of like explaining large language models. And it shows that you can identify emergent linguistic structure in artificial ne neural networks trained by self supervision. And in this case, it essentially means that we can identify syntax trees uh, just by looking at the representation, probing the, represent the representations. And is very useful insight for researchers in the space of like large language models or natural language processing or machine learning. However, it's very clear that such explanations are not really used to help decision makers uh, 
to make meaningful decisions from uh, natural language processing models. And I would also argue that the recent excitement around mechanistic interpretability essentially is similar. It is working towards the goal of providing explanations that helps researchers better understand the model, but having a better scientific understanding of the model, which doesn't necessarily generalize as an effective explanation in the context of decision support or actually improving human interaction uh, beyond the sake of understanding the model. And the reason that I kind of want to highlight this article from Chris Ola, I think it also has like a very nice summary that I think highlights the key point of this lesson three. There are many different goals of AI explanations. In the in this article on uh, at the end, uh, Chris Ola advocates this natural science perspective. The neural networks are an object of empirical empirical uh, investigation, perhaps similar to an organism in biology. And such work would try to make empirical claims uh, about a given work which could be held to the standard of falsifiability. So I think this view is totally sensible. And I think the only thing I would like to add is that mostly this audience would be scientific, would be researchers in machine learning. And they would be essentially similar to biologists and is not going to finish the step of like delivering this explanation to uh, to a decision maker. And in this same article, just right before this natural science perspective, it also summarized the two existing views. One is that some researchers, especially those with a deep learning background, want the interpretability benchmark, which can evaluate how effective an interpretative method is. And second, other researchers with an HCI background may wish to evaluate the interpretability methods through user studies. I guess in this case, my talk definitely is side. Uh, kind of connects much better with the people with HCI background. But I kind of want to argue, even just this slide alone kind of argues that the second one is really not a useful proposal. There are many different goals of explanations. It's impossible to have a single benchmark that uh, delineates the benefit or the effectiveness of different interpretability methods. And on top of that, I kind of want to argue that Essentially, the first view, the natural science perspective, is actually a specific example of the third example. Well, it is think about a particular group of users. users. When your primary users are scientific researchers, are, are researchers in machine learning, then publishing your paper as an empirical finding is essentially running the user study. You will hope that other researchers should validate your finding through um, some, some through other probing methods or through other types of interpretability methods. And that would be the way user study happens in that for that audience. Again, um, I think the, the, the to, to conclude, I think the main theme of this talk is that effective AI explanations require the understanding of human interpretation. It's important that we have this picture of like what explanations are for in mind. And with that, then that really argues for uh, the importance of the interpretation step. And to just to introduce a little more terminology to help like guide the conversation around explanation and interpretability, I think another way to view this is that there are kind of two goals. On the left, I think this is often discussed in the machine learning community, or AI community. We want explanations to be feasible. And that's, we, although we know that by distilling billions of parameters of hundreds of billions of parameters into explanation, we are deviating from the original model. But we still hope that the final explanation is at least faithful to the model. But the interpretation step, step emphasizes the pragmatics part of it. Or in psychological terms, it, it takes the functional view of explanations. It's important that the explanations actually serve the goal of the users. And we cannot serve that goal if we don't know how humans interpret them. While it's, it's very tempting to view this as kind of contradictory goals or like these are trade-offs that one strikes. Um, I think it's actually the other way. I think like pragmatism actually somehow encompasses uh, faithfulness. It's important to know what level of faithfulness is required uh, by informed by the pragmatism. And that's a kind of much longer argument that we are writing in some uh, our ongoing work is trying to clarify, and I'm happy to discuss this more if you're interested, and feel free to email me. And with that, I think 
Uh, I just kind of give some concrete directions for future work. I think on the interpretation, I think the important question is to think about how humans make sense of different types of explanations and identify mechanisms of, of shaping human inter interpretation. It's important to think about what, why we generate explanations. The goal is to actually change people's interpretation, is to provide people an interpretation that's useful for their goal. And we need to have mechanisms of shaping human intuition for the explanations to work. And once we have those mechanisms, then for in lesson two, we can potentially adapt our ways of generating explanations or think of better ways to provide this. Uh, explanations that are tailored to these mechanisms, which are very, very, is a very big open problem, but I think I have very concrete suggestions for like upcoming researchers in this space. I think it's very important that we at least specify assumptions about human mental models when we write papers on explanations. Like how we expect these explanations that will be used by humans. And then we need to provide a hypothesis on how explanations may improve human understanding. And I think this is space where like I think a lot more Creative research, so creative thinking can be done, and I think it will be an area that benefits a lot of like new uh, ideas in this space. With that, uh, I want to thank you you for your attention, and all of this work wouldn't have been possible without support and awesome work done by students in my group. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy uh, the workshop at ICML. Thank you so much.